Hi, and welcome. David, where are we going today? A place where almost no one has ever gone before. Our research trail today takes a look into the work of a brilliant scientist named Ari Mellis de Goose, who I believe will become much more widely known as more people learn about what he accomplished. That sounds like serious praise. It is. Video 26 will begin presenting the Ari Mellis de Goose story, and I believe it's a very interesting one. That's what we want our viewers to learn. It's fear and pain. David, where do we begin to describe the work of this, at least at this point, still mostly unknown individual? I would say the early part of his career showed he was a brilliant engineer. For example, he patented an efficient and compact wind turbine. Wind turbine? Okay, that's a good start. But Hold on, we haven't gotten to the good part okay, yet. Okay, I'm holding. Please proceed and let's uh, hear what you got. Somewhere around the late 1990s, the goose creativity kicked in big time. He saw things others had not seen and thereby was able to invent things in the laboratory that were breakthroughs and then obtain patents on these inventions. But before we dive all the way in, I would like to present several key points. Okay, you do that, but then we dive. We dive. The first point is that Ari Mellis de Goose, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, was a native of the Netherlands. Therefore, his native language was Dutch. Most of his patents were in the Netherlands patent system, therefore in Dutch. And I believe most of his work has not yet been translated into English. Then, if one puts the name Ari de Goose into a search engine, the person located is an executive of a large oil company not the de Goose we are presenting here. Furthermore, as we unfold this information, it can be seen that the famous Ari de Goose, the executive, and our presently not so famous scientist, Ari Mellis de Goose, were working in opposite directions to each other. Mm. That is interesting, David, but if that covers the preliminaries, let's dive in, as you said. We dive. Yes. Let us start by looking at this graph, which comes from one of Ari Mellis de Goose patents. This graph is actually from one of his patents? Indeed. This is an astronomical abundance curve for the chemical elements, all the way from hydrogen up to uranium. Okay, so I noticed the left end of the graphs up through boron have huge dips in the abundance numbers. Yes. De Goose saw these abundance curves 
It's very important to note they're plotted on a logarithmic scale as powers of 10. Now we discussed that in, in video 24 that you can make a number look very compact with exponential notation but then you miss the sense of how big or how small that number really is. So looking at these curves the goose had a brilliant insight what made these four elements between hydrogen and carbon so many orders of magnitude less abundant than what they should have been. What would cause that? His theory of nuclear structure, thinking way outside the box, took him into a new realm of science and invention. De Goose came to the conclusion that those few elements at the low end of the periodic table were uniquely capable of relatively easily entering into nuclear fusion reactions with protons, that's hydrogen nuclei, or other elements in this low-end group. Okay, so he's saying that these elements are scarce because they entered into nuclear fusion and transmuted into other elements? <laughs> That is really thinking outside the box. How did he reach that conclusion? Yes, de Goose is a real alchemist. To his way of thinking, these light elements could be thought of as geometric structures, often linear in shape, of protons and neutrons, which could transmute to the next higher element, atomic number goes up by one, provided that the nuclei of these light elements were exposed to a flux of protons, that's hydrogen nuclei, which could be coming from chemical reactions, not nuclear reactions. Okay, so what would it take to test a hypothesis like that? One of his patents states that low atomic number elements such as boron or lithium, using conditions in an internal combustion engine, could be gasoline, could be diesel, enter some, could be a small number, but some nuclear fusion reactions with hydrogen and thereby noticeably increase performance. De Goose did laboratory experiments showing that these low atomic number elements in a hydrogen plasma transmuted into other elements and produced extra heat. This occurred in only 600 degrees C. It is not clear from the Google translated patents how many engine experiments De Goose did himself, but we have information from various U.S. patents, not even talking about nuclear fusion, that are mentioned by Rex Research, good data source, pertaining to this De Goose patent. They list either lithium or boron compounds added to the fuel in only a 1 to 1,000 weight ratio increasing mileage in ordinary cars. Miles per gallon increases in the range of 20 to 30 percent were reported. The same reasoning should be applicable for a gas turbine engine or a fuel-fired boiler. Wow, so you have a very small amount, possibly very small, of a nuclear reaction, which in this case then provides no radiation, uh, and so to speak, hidden inside a chemical reaction, and the only evidence we see is increased performance to like 20-30% better. I would like 20-30% uh, to 30 better fuel economy on my car, Me too. Especially, <laughs> especially these days. You know, David, companies involved in transportation, whether it be air or sea or land or maybe even space, could become very interested in the uh, Arimelis de Goose work. They could. <laughs> but, <laughs> dot, 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 okay. I see where you're going with that. Well, and you're probably right. But so so then, is there any more uh, 
of, of RMLs to goose patents that are showing uh, energy released from transmutation? Yes. A little more before we wrap this one up. One to goose patent discusses the transmutation of molecular nitrogen in air to carbon monoxide. They both have the same molecular weight, 28. Nitrogen is fairly inert, whereas carbon monoxide is a fuel. I remember from many years ago, I don't remember the source, but there was an article saying that welders in a confined space could die from carbon monoxide poisoning even if they were not using a fuel containing carbon. This seems so strange to me, but now it has come back. The Goose obtained a patent on this very process of converting nitrogen into a fuel gas. Did I understand that right? He starts with nitrogen, ain't gonna burn, and converts it into carbon monoxide, a fuel gas? Well, not only that, <clears throat> but two of the Goose patents were on the topic of creating nuclear fusion in a mixture of chemically inert gases. These patents remind me of a mysterious invention called the PAP engine, which to my knowledge no one has yet been able to duplicate in the way the inventor claimed it was working. It was said to operate by firing high voltage discharges through a cylinder containing a mixture of inert gases and sealed by a metal bellows to allow for piston motion and no fuel was chemically burned. Another strange claim which again may make sense in light of these Degoose patents. There's a lot there David. Are there any more transmutations related to Degoose's work? Yes. What do you know about helium? helium? Where does it come from? Well, it makes your voice sound funny and gets the Goodyear blimp to float up in the air, we put it in balloons, but yeah, where does it come from? Helium comes from deep underground, often at about 1% in natural gas. I have personally asked geologists why helium comes from underground, and I get a blank stare as a response. The nuclear fusion reactions proposed by Degoose have helium and heat as the final result. So I present the idea that lithium or boron deep underground could be the source of helium and heat coming out of the earth. Wow, David, there is like I said, there's a lot here, a lot to chew on uh, from outside the box. Uh, I think, though, you have given a good presentation, uh, introduction to, to Degoose's work. Uh, this, I've got to say, he's a notable scientist based on everything you've shared with us. And um, with that, we probably have to go into a little bit more uh, sobering uh, information. Right. So, as we have seen, as a recurring topic through a number of our videos, with the current state of affairs on planet Earth, the fate of a lot of these inventors of free energy or infinite energy technology is fairly tragic. Yes. Remember we stated that Ari de Goose, the petroleum executive, and Airy Mellis de Goose, who is our guy, could be thought of as working in opposite directions. Airy de Goose would have wanted his company to sell as much petroleum products as possible, whereas Airy Mellis de Goose's inventions eliminated or decreased the need to burn petroleum products. In November 2007, Ari Mellis de Goose was found dead from natural causes 
in his car in the parking lot of the airport at Charlotte, North Carolina. He had recently invented a material that would keep producing energy by itself, and he was headed to Europe to obtain development and manufacturing funds. I and many others believe that his death did not result from natural causes. I believe you're right on with that, David. I mean, there's just too many of these cases involving scientists like that, inventors. Yes, Bjorna. And in fact, I want to pray right now that this will change. Okay, yeah. Almighty God, I pray that the situation on earth will change for the better so that the creativity of all these inventors who have been mysteriously killed can come forth and be accessible to we the people to improve life on earth according to God's will. Amen. Amen to that, David. Thank you. I think that is a great way to uh, wrap this one, uh, David. And uh, then perhaps when we get better translations of what Aramelis de Goose did, uh, we could cover more of his work in future videos. I agree. More exciting information is coming down the road now we want to end this video with a list of names of some of these inventors and communicators of free energy technology who mysteriously lost their lives in the years they died. And with that sobering information in mind, thank you for watching and see you, see next, you next video. video.